G'day, Adam here again from STG Global. Today we're going to do another how-to video and that's going to be on the basic operation and setup of your new VAC truck. As I mentioned in previous videos, we have a HDV 6000 jetting unit. However, the same principles apply to our three, our four and a half, our six and eights without the jetting units as well. With the jetting unit on the back, I'll go through the operation, but I'll just talk about the VAC truck side of things. The boom, the tank, uh, tipping off, gurney operation, etc. We'll do a more detailed uh, how-to video later on in the series about our jetting unit. The first thing I'll talk about is positioning your truck. The ideal range of doing any NDD with our truck with your remote control boom will be at your pivot point up here of the, of the boom. So if we want a pothole or trench here or service proof, you want to get your spot at a back your back. Two metres to three metres is the ideal range. And the reason we suggest you do that is if you're potholing here and the service you're trying to find isn't here, you'll have a full range of motion to come right through here, right through here, and then a full range of motion to come right through here. So by going boom left and right, you'll be able to capture all that area there, also extending the boom in and out. The reason you want to do that is purely for efficiency. If you can't quite reach an area and you've got to pack up your hoses and move your truck again, it's not going to be an efficient way to operate. So again, two to three metres off, your ideal range of movement, full range of movement, ideal digging location. Now I do preface it in there will be times when you cannot remove the boom from the cradle, whether it be overheads, trees in the way, other plant equipment. If that's the case and you can't get the boom completely off the cradle and move it left or right, we suggest the ideal operating spot is about a metre off where your boom is housed. That way you can just simply take the boom out of the cradle, move it down right onto your one metre zone here. Now what we do talk about is if you're service proving out in the field and you're chasing a service maybe every five to ten metres depending on your permit, the beauty of our VAC truck is it's not PDO operated, it's a standalone unit. So if you're potholing we suggest you're working off the back of the truck here, the module's always on, you don't need to worry about engaging and disengaging the PDO every time you move from one pothole to the next and you can simply have the worker at the back of the truck here potholing for a service. Uh, you might have a backfill unit, stand pipe and then you can move along and keep chasing the service as you go. Majority of times uh, the service should uh, run in a pretty straight line. So I would certainly recommend at the back, uh, again probably a two to three metres off the back tailgate, that's going to be your ideal potholing zone and then you keep moving along not having to worry about engaging or disengaging a PDO. So when we talk about site setup, it's obviously important you've got a spotter which has got you into that ideal operating zone of where you'd be potholing or, or trenching out for the day. The one thing too you need to keep in mind is about being on a level surface. Uh, if you're not on a level surface, you might find up here the cone coming off the cyclone filter isn't connected on properly. If that was to happen, you will significantly reduce your vacuum. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're positioning up before you get the boom off and hook up your hoses and prepare to start operating for the day. Okay, so now we're going to go through the basic operation of the VAC unit. As mentioned at the start of this how-to video, this is a jetting unit, but we'll have a separate video for that to run through the operation. So through the control panel, we'll just go through the actual VAC truck operation and the gurney operation, tipping off, etc. First of all, we've got the power on to get power onto the fan and we'll be turning the unit on and pressing the start button there. We won't start it up for now as you won't be able to hear me, but that's how we're going to be operating the truck. So we'll just go through some of uh, the control panel items here and uh, what, what all the switches and dials do. So the tops, more so with your uh, jetting and then coming down here to the second row you've got the vibrator of which we'll go into detail about that a little bit later when we talk about tipping off but you've got your work light here that does all your external work lights on the back of the door itself on the boom up the top of the cabinet the cabinet lights are simply the ones inside here for any night shift work uh, you've got your left gurney and your right gurney left being your passenger side right being your driver side you've got hose reel in, hose reel out, so that'll be for your tiger tail off the back door. Tank up and down, simply to raise and lower the tank. Door open, door close, 
by holding the door open button that uh, releases the door clamps in sequence and then the door will slowly rise up after that. Uh, you boom up and down. The boom also can go in and out for extra reach and then obviously you boom left and right. The gurney button here, if you turn the gurneys on, they won't simply activate to stop them overheating. You also need to turn the gurney on itself. What that allows you to do if you're operating, you can simply have the gurneys have power fed to them, but you don't have to have them going because they will overheat if, if water doesn't go through. So you can simply just turn them off like that. The air open and close is the butterfly valve at the back here. So when you're setting up, you would have the air valve closed, therefore it'll be bypassing the suction. So you're not going to be working under full suction while you're, you're connecting your hoses to your boom hose. And then when you're ready to go, you'll simply press the button. This one up here, air suction, that will illuminate. And then you can adjust your revs up to get full vacuum. We'll just go through the uh, other operations as well. That simply here, up and down, you've got the, the rabbit and the turtle. When you start here, we'll be at low revs. We recommend the safest way to set up and get ready for a day's operating is to have it at low revs. Once you're all set up, you have your correct PPE on, then you rev up to maximum RPM, which will be approximately 2100. That is the ideal operating RPM of our system. That will not max out the cat motor. They've been calibrated to not completely redline the cat motor. So you know you can operate that at high RPMs on the screen, safely and efficiently all day long. Then we go to the next, we've got a four-way discharge valve. What this allows you to do is you can either have it in the downward position, so that's when you're vacuuming up. If you need to blow or you've got any blockages, you can simply flick it up and that will actually blow out. Our, our blowers are reversible through our four-way valve. Simply the next one here is your handrail up and handrail down, which offers you fall from height uh, protection, which would be a site requirement as well. I'll just cover through when we're about to tip off. Uh, so you've had a spot to bring you up to the tip off point. The important thing that you want to do is when you have a debris tank full, that you want to try to take as much load off the rear door locking pins. And the way we do that is by dewatering. The first thing we want to do when we're at the tip off facility Obviously remove the cam lock cap here. You do have a safety chain there so you don't lose it. We've gone with a simple to operate manual gate valve as opposed to an air valve because these are very reliable, very easy to use. You're simply just pushing down and dewatering at the start. So you want to dewater. The whole point of dewatering is you want to be taking the full weight as much as you possibly can off the door locking pins. It's a lot safer to do that as well. And if you don't and you simply open your door, over time you will put a significant amount of stress on your door pins and you'll also flood the back of your truck in mud. We've opened here and we've discharged the water. Now you may have used uh, 2,000 litres for the day and on best guess you may have only had two or 300 litres of water come out. So we can safely say there's still more water in there and we want to try to get all that water out as possible. So what we need to do now is walk around to the side here. At this stage we would have the, the blower running, so there would be vacuum. This could be done at low revs, that's fine. You'd want to get your end cap and then place the end cap here. So there'd be vacuum here, low vacuum. You pop the end cap in here and what that simply does is that'll start then vacuuming all the mud off the back door and that'll create a cavity for the water to flow out. You'll actually be able to hear it, it'll be very audible as it chugs back all the mud from the back door and the water will slowly make a way out. Once you can hear air coming through that open six inch outlet, you simply remove the cap and then the water will begin to flow out again. We suggest you do this. Over time you'll have it with experience, but you'll get to know how much water that you have in your debris tank and how much you've let out. So the end goal is when you come to the back of the tank to open the door, via the remote, you'll undo it, the four pins open in sequence, and as the door come up, ideally, there wouldn't be much water at all coming out. So the back of the truck's keeping nice and clean, and you'll have mud a third or a halfway up. And at this point, we can stand back, and we can tip the tank up as we go. So we've completely dewatered the tank, we've opened the door up, and then we've tipped the tank back. A majority of your debris will slide out. That is the benefit of having a hot dip galvanised debris tank. It will slide out quite well. For any remnants of debris in there, then obviously you'd want to get in there and wash out. This truck is fitted with a vibrator. 
which is the yellow piece of equipment up here. Now they can be fitted at the start when you get the original build or we can add those on later. With the vibrator, you only want to activate that when the tank is fully upright, okay? If there's a little bit of debris stuck in the top of the tank up here, it's been a bit troublesome to wash out, then you'd want to come up here, hit the vibrator on, and that'll shake the last bit of debris out. Turn the vibrator on, clean up the tank, and then down it comes.